Hello everyone. This video contains a brief presentation on Loa Loa filariasis, the African eye worm disease. Hopefully, this presentation will provide you with a basic understanding of the disease. I will talk about the causes and symptoms, the diagnosis and treatment, plus the control and possible prevention measures that can be taken to avoid it. Loa Loa filariasis is a parasitic disease affecting the skin and eyes of individuals infected with the nematode worm called Loa Loa. This disease is also known as Loiasis, subcutaneous filariasis, calabar swellings, fugitive swelling, and African eye worm infection. The first definitive record was by a French surgeon in 1770. He described the worm passing across the eye of a Caribbean woman in Santo Domingo. However, he was not successful removing it. In 1778, a French ship surgeon noticed that slaves in transit from West Africa to America suffered from inflammation in their eyes. He successfully removed a worm from one of these individuals. In 1848, the first English report of the removal of the worm from the eye is that of Loney. In 1890, microfilaria were discovered by the ophthalmologist McKenzie, and samples were identified by Minson. In 1912, the transmission of the disease by deer flies was discovered by the British expert Thompson. Loa Loa filariasis is mostly found in West and Central Africa. The disease ranges from southeastern Benin to southern Sudan and Uganda. It also extends from about 10 degrees north to Angola. It is highly concentrated in rainforest and warm swamp regions. Loa Loa filariasis is known to be endemic to 11 countries in the world. It is estimated that between 3 and 13 million people in West and Central Africa are infected. It travelers to areas at risk for long periods of time are at higher risk of the infection. The risk of the infection also depends on the abundance of the transmitting flies in an area and the number of bites on an individual. The causative agent of this disease is Loa Loa, which is a parasitic filarial round worm that belongs to the phylum Nematoda. Its common name is eye worm. Humans are known to be the primary reservoir for this parasite. Adult male worms range in length from 2 to 3.5 centimeters, while adult female worms range from 5 to 7 centimeters. Both male and female are no more than 0.5 millimeters wide. Microfilaria are 250 to 300 micrometers long and 6 to 8 micrometers wide. They are sheathed in a cuticle. Two species of flies from the genus Chrysops are responsible for the transmission of this disease. Their common name is deer fly. They belong to the order Diptera and the family Tabanida. Deer flies are blood sucking species. They are 12 to 25 millimeters long. They usually bite during the day. Females usually feed on blood for reproduction, and males feed only on nectar. Deer flies are most abundant in areas containing ponds, marshes, streams, or bogs. They come out only during the day, when the weather is warmer. They usually bite during the day. Pain and itch are the most common symptoms of their bites, but more significant allergic reactions can also develop. The life cycle of Loa Loa can be divided into two parts, fly stages and human stages. Human stages. The third stage filarial larvae are introduced to the skin of a human host through a bite by a deer fly during a blood meal. These larvae develop into adults and are usually found in the subcutaneous tissue of a human host. Finally, adults produce sheathed microfilaria, which are found in spinal fluids, urine, sputum, blood, and in the lungs. Fly stages. The fly ingests microfilaria during a blood meal when it bites an infected human host. 
Following ingestion, the microfilaria lose their sheaths and migrate from the fly's midgut to the thoracic muscles of the victor. Then, the microfilaria develop into first stage larvae in the thoracic muscles, where it also develops into third stage infective larvae. The third stage infective larvae migrate to the fly's proboscis and can infect another human when the fly bites to take a blood meal. Calabar swelling is one of the main symptoms of the development of this disease. Once the larvae enter the human body through the wound caused by a deer fly bite, they enter the subcutaneous layer where they mature into adults. The adult worms keep moving and wandering throughout the subcutaneous layer. Once they stop moving, Calabar swelling starts to develop in the surrounding tissues. Limbs and nearby joints are the usual places where these worms make their stops. Therefore, the swellings appear as allergic reactions and begin to itch. Dead adult worms and their metabolic byproducts or waste can worsen an infection of the subcutaneous layer of the skin. The visible migration of the adult worms to the eye can occur frequently, which is another main symptom of this disease. That is why Loa Loa is also called the eye worm. This migration results in swelling of the affected eyelid and conjunctivitis, eye congestion, itching, pain, and light sensitivity. Other manifestations of this disease can occur such as itching, hives, muscle pains, joint pains, fatigue, and visibility of the worm migration under the skin. Individuals with long-term infection can also develop kidney damage, inflammation of the lymph glands, scrotal swellings, lung infertility rates, along with fluid around the lungs, and scarring of the heart muscle. This disease can be diagnosed through blood tests for microfilaria. Microfilaria have also been found in urine, sputum, and spinal fluids. The blood sample needs to be taken during the day when the microfilaria are traveling in the bloodstream. According to some estimates, 30% of patients do not have microfilaria in their bloodstream or have such small quantities that they are rarely seen in microscopic examinations. Therefore, other diagnosing methods can come into play, such as subcutaneous biopsy to examine for a presence of adult worms in the skin layers. Eye examination is another method to closely examine the patient for migrating adults in the eyes. Finally, an immune assay can be done to the patient to identify if there are antibodies present against this parasitic worm. The most straightforward treatment is surgical removal of adult worms that migrates under the skin or across the eyes. This is done with a local anesthesia. This method of a treatment to provide immediate relief. However, this only relieves local symptoms and does not cure the patient completely. Antiparasitic drugs are another way of treating this disease. DEC and albendazole are two examples of the drugs that are used to treat this disease. DEC is used to kill larvae and adults while albendazole is used to kill adult worms only. There is a high risk of fatal brain inflammation from treatment with DEC. This risk can be reduced through appropriate examination and management at medical centers with experience managing this disease before the initiation of a treatment. Therefore, some patients with other medical conditions and infections are not recommended to be treated with DEC until their cases are addressed and examines to be safe to use DEC. This video shows how the eye worm can be surgically removed from an infected person's eye. Unfortunately, no vaccination is available for this disease. However, 
30 mg of DEC can be taken once a week by long-term travelers to affected areas as a protection method. Because deer flies breed in muddy shaded areas along river banks and are attracted to smoke from wood fires, avoiding those areas and conditions may reduce one's risk of infection. Other personal control measures can be done to prevent the infection. These include wearing insect repellent such as DEET on exposed skin and wearing long sleeves and long pants during the day when deer flies bite. In conclusion, to prevent the contraction of this condition, it is important to take some precautions. International travelers should follow prevention and control measures set forth by specialized agencies and disease control centers. Comprehensive information about Loa Loa can be found and studied further at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention Government website, as well as the University of South Carolina's Immunology and Microbiology Department's website. Thank you for listening.